At the University of Maryland's Institute for Bioscience and Biotechnology Research, a group of biologists studies the deadliest animal on Earth, the mosquito. We work with mosquitoes because they're the primary vector for some of the most uh, deadly human diseases on Earth, like malaria, dengue fever, uh, and even some less than deadly diseases like Zika, chikungunya, yellow fever, things like that. They're so important and you think they're such small little creatures, but yet they can cause so many detrimental effects to our societies. We're trying to take some of this knowledge of how these mosquitoes work uh, and do something useful with it. David Obrachta is a professor in the Department of Entomology. His research group has partnered with Cenaria, a local company working on a vaccine for malaria. Because the malaria parasite requires well-fed mosquitoes to survive, Obrachta's group has genetically engineered mosquitoes that serve as tiny factories, producing malaria samples for study. Their entire vaccine is based on the isolation of these parasites from the salivary glands of these mosquitoes. What we've been doing with Scenaria is to try to genetically modify mosquitoes so that they become much more infected with the parasites, so that when Scenaria is isolating these parasites from the mosquitoes, they'll uh, be able to recover many more than they would if they had an unmodified mosquito. As it turns out, raising mosquitoes is no simple task. We have to actually make the mosquito think that they are feeding on a person. So we have this thing called an artificial feeder. We have here is a small membrane that we apply to this feeder. And this is basically analogous to the skin barrier between the mosquito and the blood. And we use human blood because we actually do a lot of work with the human malaria parasite, Plasmodium falciparum. And so we require human blood to infect the mosquitoes. To genetically engineer or transform mosquitoes, Obracta's team must inject DNA into their eggs. During insect transformation, the biggest hurdle is getting material into the embryo. We uh, have a controller for air pressure so that we can push air in to the needle, and, which forces the DNA material to come out through the, uh, the tip. And we'll bring this uh, needle in, pop it in. And it doesn't take a lot of the injection material in order to create transgenic insects. But mosquitoes are not the only focus. Obracta also oversees the insect transformation facility, where manager Rob Harrell and his staff genetically modify other insects for labs across the nation. The insect transformation facility is the only facility that does this in the world uh, for insects other than uh, Drosophila melanogaster. Drosophila is the fruit fly that we see flying around bananas that's been used for as a genetic model for many, many years. We have the capacity to focus on introducing the gene without any distractions. And I think that's our strength. New technologies have the potential to revolutionize the way genetic research gets done. What's most exciting is the, the advent of CRISPR. And that is a technology that allows us to either cut out portions of DNA or insert uh, portions of DNA into any place we want to. This use of so-called genome editing technologies really represents a, a breakthrough, not just to, for mosquito biology, but for all insect biology. Despite these exciting innovations, the public can be quite skeptical of genetically modified organisms, or GMOs. The second you mention a GMO, people do get that reaction where they are frightened by it. And people always ask me, they're like, well, you're going to modify an organism. You're going to basically create something new, and then you're going to release it into the world without knowing what's going to happen next. And so my response is actually, my job is to find out what's going to happen next. There's a lot of, a lot of checks and balances that we have to go through to really be sure that the organism that we're going to be changing in some sort of way to benefit society is actually doing what we intended it to do and has no other effects that could cause unforeseen harm.